Hello everyone, my name is Mark Valdez and today I'm presenting Streamline Modern and Jimmy McGill, The Circular Journey of Slip and Jimmy. This presentation is an update of my ideas regarding architecture and symbolism in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul as of the end of Season 3 of Better Call Saul. I noticed there were quite a few glass block windows in Better Call Saul and I wondered what they might signify. Glass block windows are a hallmark of the Streamline Modern style, the last phase of Art Deco and popularized in the 30s. There are a number of characteristic features of, of Streamline Modern such as a, a horizontal emphasis to the buildings, the use of streamlining and ships railings, uh, in general, white colored buildings, but sometimes pastels to suggest the sea. Use of um, uh, prominent parapets and glass block windows, of course. The streamlined modern style can apply not just to buildings, but to locomotives, automobiles, and even to commercial products like radios. In Better Call Saul, there are several different ways that glass block windows are used. Uh, for example, we see it used as a flashback in the um, Cicero Alley where Marco and Jimmy perfect their Rolex scam. We also see it in the hospital lobby where Chuck lies to Jimmy about their dying mother's last wishes. There are a number of Chicago callbacks in Better Call Saul, at least six good examples during the run of the TV series. For example, when Slip and Jimmy um, goes to watch his brother suffer his own slip and fall, he runs past this glass block window. There are uh, uses of glass block windows in offices. For example, Jimmy's nail salon office whose composition closely resembles that of Salvador Dali's Corpus Hypercubus. Uh, Salvador Dali believed the worlds of science and religion can coexist, and Vince Gilligan apparently believes much the same. Also in Jimmy and Kim's new law office, there are uh, many glass block windows. As well um, in Jean's Omaha apartment, there's a glass block window present. There are also allusions to glass block windows. For example, the folds in the Mylar space blankets used to make the Faraday cage to protect Chuck from electromagnetic radiation. Now, at first I didn't know what glass block windows signified, but then by chance I read about Albuquerque's Kelvinator house, the first house in Albuquerque to feature glass block windows. The architect, William Burke Jr., was inspired by the 13 futuristic model homes at Chicago's Century of Progress Exposition in 1933 and 34. That exposition was ground zero for spread of the streamlined modern style around the United States and the rest of the world. And you see things there really for the first time. For example, the um, America's first modern glass block uh, building was the Owens, Illinois glass block building at the Chicago Exposition. Now, uh, it, uh, Albuquerque is a good showcase uh, for Chicago's influence in ar architecture. The reason for that is that uh, uh, the railroad came to Albuquerque from Chicago in 1880, and Albuquerque received a great deal of its uh, inspiration from Chicago. Vince Gilligan uses glass block windows to represent any kind of Chicago link, but his real target may be the, um, the century of progress, about which he has many doubts and reservations. Better Call Saul, and Breaking Bad as well, recapitulate the history of 19th and 20th century window technology, how glass windows were modified to bring sunlight into the recesses of large buildings, and also, once electrical technology improved, 
how large buildings could become beacons and lanterns in the darkness. Chicago influences were prominent with glass block windows and Luxfer prismatic tile windows, vault glass as well in the sidewalks, but also plate glass and skylights. We see uh, a direct reference to the uh, Chicago Century of Progress exposition in episode Marco at the end of season one of Better Call Saul. We get a view of the Chicago waterfront as seen from the Adler Planetarium, which sits on the grounds of the exposition itself. In 1933, 40 years had passed since the 1893 World Columbian Exposition. The city had just gone through the Al Capone years, the, and gone through the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, and was stuck in the Depression and Chicago needed a makeover. Chicago's centennial in 1933 was the perfect opportunity. With his glib superficiality, Jimmy McGill is really the, the perfect child of Chicago's century of progress. Vince Gilligan also places Jimmy McGill in the tradition of Chicago's classiest strippers. In episode Miho, we had the It's Showtime Folks musical tribute to Chicago choreographer Bob Fosse. Bob Fosse in turn choreographed many tributes to Sally Rand and her fan dance. Sally Rand was the star of the 1933 Century of Progress exposition, just like Little Egypt had been the star of the 1893 exposition. And we remember Little Egypt fondly today because she introduced America to belly dancing. Now, um, Art Deco, uh, when it's combined with industrial design, yields streamlined modern styling. But there's also a second style in the Southwest of combining Art Deco with Pueblo Revival style. That style is called Pueblo Deco and is exemplified, for example, by the Chemo Theater in downtown Albuquerque. Breaking Bad uses Pueblo Deco archways to foreshadow tragedy. The, um, the Pueblo Deco archway is an abstraction. If you take the Pueblo Revival uh, style here of post and lintel construction and abstract it, you get, for example, uh, these Pueblo Deco archways at the Albuquerque airport. Now, um, we are familiar how in Breaking Bad, the uh, uh, air tragedy at the end of season two was foreshadowed uh, by the um, by the the bear, by the the toy bear. But um, this view itself from the episode uh, Four Days Out is also a form of foreshadowing. The Pueblo Deco archways mean tragedy. Now, why do Pueblo Deco archways signify death? The sound people on Breaking Bad sometimes use the death bell to foreshadow deaths. For example, when uh, Jesse invites Jane to see his flat screen TV, we hear church bells ring. And in the Albuquerque Civic Plaza scenes, a clock tower bell is heard. Now, a bell shape is not a Pueblo Deco archway shape, but a bell mold is. And it may be that the design team sees the um, the uh, Pueblo Deco archway as as indicative of, of death as well. Now, Pueblo Deco archways are present in the uh, hospital lobby uh, shortly before the uh, the cousin dies, and we also see them in in Gail's apartment shortly before his demise. There are numerous. Uh, Pueblo Deco archways in Jesse and Jane's duplex, and we also see them on the back deck at Hank and Marie's. The Pueblo Deco archway seems to signify or signal a tragic romance. In contrast, 
the cottage style at Andrea's new home lacks um, any Pueblo Deco archway and signals that this that Jesse's romance with her is more enduring. Now, since uh, Better Call Saul is a more gentle show than uh, Breaking Bad, we rarely see Pueblo Deco archways, but we do, for example, in the uh, um, in the scene in the HHM lobby when Howard announces Chuck's retirement uh, and foreshadowing his demise. It could be that Vince Gilligan was inspired by the uh, streamlined modern style of Albuquerque's Knob Hill neighborhood. Uh, Vince Gilligan lived in Knob Hill during the filming of Breaking Bad. Here on the right is a view of the condos where he lived. Uh, looking south, if you turn your head to the east and, and look across the street at Barrymore's Antiques, there's uh, beautiful glass block windows present. So he didn't have to look far for inspiration. He may have also been influenced by slang usage of the term Art Deco, which is nearly synonymous with high maintenance, that Jimmy McGill is so Art Deco. Glass block windows appear early in Breaking Bad and signify Chicago right from the start. For example, we see this glass block window when um, the DEA agents arrive at the meth lab bust on the running boards of their vehicle, not unlike Chicago gangsters. Uh, Jesse Pinkman falls out of the uh, window of the house next door, which, uh, which has glass block windows. Uh, he, uh, Vince Gilligan and crew may be saying that uh, Jesse is a product of, uh, of a flawed educational system, which in America largely reflects the influence of Chicago's John Dewey. There are Chicago mob influences. For example, in Tuco's office, we see uh, a glass block window as Walt threatens. In addition, in the background, we see a slot machine. The Chicago mob had a lot of um, um, interests in Las Vegas. And um, we also see in Tuco's office in the corner, a baseball bat, which was a favorite tool of uh, Tony Batters Accardo. And it may be that um, Tuco himself represents uh, Tony the Ant, who is a well-known enforcer in Las Vegas. We remember Tony the Ant uh, from um, Joe Pesci's uh, performance in the movie uh, Casino, the 1995 movie. Um, he was named Nicky Santoro in the movie, but, but he represented Tony the Ant. Now, uh, Tony the Ant is famous as well for being a close uh, favorite of mobster Sam Giancana. Giancana was under surveillance by the FBI and Tony the Ant had worked out a path through uh, other people's backyards in order to visit Giancana without being observed, much like Howard does uh, in the episode Witness. And so um, is Vince Gilligan suggesting that the law functions much like the mafia when Howard does the same? Benneke Fabricators has glass block windows. The company may be named after the Beneke Corporation, manufacturer of toilet seats founded in Chicago in 1893. Beneke has two channels of distribution for their toilet seats, a downscale Tuffy line and an upscale Magnolia line. Um, but more likely, uh, Beneke, uh, the glass block windows here, refer to the 2001 failure of Chicago's big five accounting firm, Arthur Anderson, due to accounting fraud in the Enron scandal. Schuyler White is an accountant involved in accounting fraud. Similar to Beneke, Arthur Anderson tried to develop separate channels of distribution for its product, but with more complicated product than toilet seats, they failed. Fragments of Arthur Anderson still operate today from Chicago's Q Center under Omega Management. Vince Gilligan operates from Albuquerque's Q Studios and has an interest in Omega Man end of history themes. And note the uh, octagonal forms present in the glass block windows here. 
The octagon is an early Christian symbol representing the new covenant and, and suggests that uh, that Schuyler is operating uh, um, under Christian grace despite her, her many failings. Saul Goodman's office is a streamlined modern marvel. The inner part of the office uh, features a, a half octagon in shape which is probably not early Christian in influence, but more uh, American utopian styling. There are uh, uh, portholes present, which is a classic uh, uh, streamlined modern feature, uh, together with a glass block window. And the, um, the, the desks and table uh, feature um, uh, a variety of bric-a-brac that is all art deco in inspiration. At the uh, hardware store where Walt Warren Stay Out of My Territory, that was filmed at Rax Hardware in Los Lunas. I've always been puzzled why they chose the Los Lunas store because it's uh, farther away from the studio than the real Bravo store that was used in season one. But the reason is because of these glass block windows here. And the reference to Chicago may be the um, uh, uh, accounting problems that True Value Hardware, which is a, a Chicago firm, uh, was suffering during the 1990s and 2000s. There are glass block windows present at the industrial laundry. They are rarely seen, prominently only once when um, when Walt is rolled into the laundry in a in a um, in a in a laundry cart. They may be honoring the legend of El Chapo Guzman, the uh, head of the Sinaloa cartel who, who now lives in a U.S. prison. In 2001, El Chapo escaped from Puente Grande prison in Mexico, allegedly in a laundry cart. And the Sinaloa cartel has a near monopoly on drug dis distribution in Chicago. There are glass block windows present in the car wash reception area, but there was no desire to have a Chicago um, a reference here. So they made efforts to efface or, or ignore the windows. Either the windows are seen from a, um, a shallow camera angle so you can't distinguish them, or as in this scene here on the left, the windows should be clearly visible but have been effaced. Um, nevertheless, in season four, they introduced uh, a space, uh, the car wash office, which is not present on site, where there are glass block windows. Uh, with this construction, they may be honoring Maria Stan, who played Bogdan uh, Wallenetz, the uh, owner of the car wash, and who moved to Chicago in 2010. The only time glass block windows are seen in the hospital is during Brock's poisoning crisis. They may refer to the 1982 Chicago Tylenol poisoning murders. At Casa Tranquila, there's a clear variety of glass block windows present, but um, the creative team had a challenge here because there's no particular need to have a Chicago reference here. So they went about creating one. In the episodes Hermanos and Face Off in Breaking Bad, in the background, Big Joe's Polka Show is playing on television. Uh, in addition, a, uh, a bingo caller uh, has an upper Midwest accent in um, episode uh, Face Off. Uh, an important venue um, for Polka in Chicago was Club 505. And of course, New Mexico's telephone area code in the Albuquerque area is uh, 505. And so that is the connection, tenuous as it may be. New identities are granted at the vacuum cleaner store. The Chicago reference here is to Alfred Hitchcock's film North by Northwest where Roger Thornhill, played by Cary Grant, reluctantly accepts the identity of George Kaplan at Chicago's Midway Air Airport in order to rescue Eve Kendall. This is um, uh, Breaking Bad's second Alec Guinness reference. Uh, Alec Guinness starred as a vacuum cleaner salesman 
um, aka British spy in the movie Our Man in Cuba. Fans of the movie North by Northwest have noted that Cary Grant spends almost the entire movie on the left hand side of the screen. The reason for that was he preferred his right profile. Similarly, in the basement scene at the vacuum cleaner store, Walt spends about 70% of the time on the left hand side of the screen and shows us his better side, his ability to plan uh, uh, Uncle Jack's murder and otherwise um, engage in strategic thought. But the remaining 30% of the time, he's on the opposite side of the screen as he rages at Saul and shows us his uglier side. The Badger is an old Chicago gangster slang term for someone who entraps others and compromises their loyalties. In episode Better Call Saul, the DEA agent is first to assume the Badger role. He entices Badger into a drug sale and subjects him to arrest. Later in the same episode, Badger himself becomes the Badger of a complicated double entrapment scheme. The camera is placed far from the scene in order to keep the background in focus so that the glass block windows present on the building in the background can be observed. This building has since been uh, demolished and replaced. Later still, Mike Ehrmantraut becomes the Badger. In episodes Bullet Points and Shotgun, um, uh, Mike uh, attempts to entice Jesse into uh, forgetting about his loyalty to Walt and going with Gus instead. And in Better Call Saul, Mike entices Tuco into committing violence in front of uh, Albuquerque policemen. At the end of the episode, End Times, we see two glass block windows present. One is for Posh Nightclub down here. No known Chicago reference there. But here in the corner, we have the offices of um, the Alibi, Albuquerque's alternative newspaper, which had to change its name from New City due to a conflict with Chicago's um, New City alternative newspaper. At the veterinarian's office, we see glass block windows. The, um, the reference here may be to Chicago's uh, Abbott Laboratories. Abbott Laboratory is a uh, big pharma. Their amphetamine helped fuel the speed scene of the 1960s. They are a frequent PETA target for, its, for their treatment of beagles and lawsuit target for their product Ensure. Uh, which was uh, featured in episode Granite State in Breaking Bad. Abbott is moving out of the animal care and in, into cardiovascular health these days. And in the vacuum left behind comes the veterinarian who uh, can also protect you against pain like Abbott Labs could, but for a price. There's a variety of window that's present in um, in Albuquerque that derives from Chicago. These, um, these windows are what's known as Luxfer prismatic tile windows. The Luxfer tile has, has uh, uh, serrations that help reflect light in, inside a building and, and help illuminate the inside of a building. Uh, Luxfer, the name, um, uh, it means light bearer and comes from the same root as Lucifer. Uh, it seemed in, in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, it seems to be linked to false pretenses um, and false fronts. We see the windows, for example, uh, across the street from Jesse's self-help group and where the, um, the skateboard twins ambush Abuelita. Lindy's Diner is used to represent Fidel Philadelphia's McClure's Bar and has both uh, glass block windows in the alley as well as Luxfer prismatic tile windows, um, both of which represent Chicago. Lucky Lindy was um, lucky enough to fly across the Atlantic uh, in 1927, but he had uh, worse luck flying to Chicago from St. Louis and, and crashed twice on that journey. There is heavy use of plate glass windows in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. 
plate glass comes from Europe, but the uh, the profit of plate glass um, was based in Chicago, uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, and so his influence is everywhere in Albuquerque. Tin ceilings uh, indicate face-to-face -face violence. T tin ceilings were a favorite in Old West saloons, and in Albuquerque it's associated with uh, Pueblo Deco architecture. We see one um, at, at Louis Bar where uh, Mike pops Walt in the face. Um, we also see at the Family First clothing store uh, um, a tin ceiling but um, there's no Pueblo Deco archway in this space. And so the encounter between Walt and the teenagers uh, never becomes a tragic encounter. The tin ceiling is rarely shown at Jesse and Jane's, but one such time is just before uh, Mike strikes Jesse in the face. There's a tin ceiling visible at, at the Kettleman's house when um, Mr. Kettleman discovers a bundle of, of bills on a toy truck. Uh, I feared for the kids at this point, I figured there'd be face-to-face uh, -face violence, but uh, Better Call Saul is a gentler show than Breaking Bad, and the kids are simply sent upstairs to their bedroom. Um, vault lights are also important in urban centers, but as it turns out, there's uh, no vault lights in Albuquerque. And um, they still wanted to use vault lights though, so they created a window that looks very much like vault lights and used it in um, Arno's bar scene with, with uh, Marco and, and, and Jimmy McGill. Clear story windows mean healing. We see them, for example, in the old uh, Schwartzman Slaughterhouse, uh, um, and they convey the message that Gus is healing. We see uh, clear story windows in the hospital scene where Jesse awaits um, uh, Brock's fate. The corridor here is a clear story, and you can clearly see out over the roof. Uh, here the message is Brock is healing. There is a clear story window as well at uh, the Triangle Grocery in Cedar Crest as Chuck walks down um, this, this aisle. And the message here is Chuck is healing. The early Christian octagon uh, represents grace, oftentimes with set pieces. In Jesse's scenes, for example, we see a uh, octagonal mirror with Easter lilies present on the wall at Spooge and Skank's place. And when Jesse throws away all his money and uh, retreats to a park, we find him on a, a rotating octagon with a jungle gym nearby, which has a very specific crystalline structure known as a snub cube octahedron, uh, which I believe the, um, they chose simply because they liked the name. In Skylar's scenes, we see the octagon as well. When Hank tries to get Skylar to turn state's evidence, we see these uh, lamps with octagonal sunbursts uh, in, present in the restaurant. All the lights are on except for the lamp directly above the booth where they sit in a very poetic touch. We see the octagon again when uh, Howard is uh, passing through people's yards. The, um, uh, it seems to suggest that God's grace is with Howard when he remains loyal to Chuck. The octagon can be combined with Streamline Modern as, as noted before in the, um, in the, in the windows at Benneke's. On the desk we have a uh, Phalaenopsis orchid, which is also known as a moth orchid. In Chinese folklore, moths uh, represent the, the spirits of dead ancestors. Uh, in general, the, seeing the orchid is, is, a, is a bad sign in Breaking Bad. Um, the octagon is present uh, in the background when Schuyler talks with the DEA. Uh, it indicates that uh, God's grace is still with her at this point. A Cartesian grid um, 
is when it's flashed as a prop in general means uh, help me understand or, or please clarify. Uh, Cartesian grids appear many times in Breaking Bad but rarely as props. We have it here for example in the letter grid that, that um, in order to communicate with Hector. Also in context of a question with, with, with Todd and Lydia and, and Mike with his uh, crossword puzzle. In Better Call Saul we also have a word search puzzle uh, flashed um, as a prop meaning help me understand or please clarify. Uh, in this case the context is the question hey you take care of that matter. In the word search we have a word clue for Rapallo who is a character in the Dishonored 2 video game where he is uh, uh, electrocuted foreshadowing Chuck's demise. In episode Rebecca we briefly see Kim with the Phalaenopsis orchid. This is a very bad sign. At this point she is, is struggling to um, uh, remain viable at HHM. Uh, in the episode Inflatable she has to decide whether to join Jimmy in the, in the new um, Wexler McGill law office and she decides to do so uh, all under the, uh, the gaze of the uh, cupola here, octagonal in shape indicating God's grace is with her with that decision. In Breaking Bad we have a, a sort of a remarkable symbolism here. The Spear of Longinus used in, um, at, uh, on Calvary Hill. Here in the Heisenberg death scene we see his wound speared much in the manner of Longinus here. And here's a quick summary of what I've discussed. I was hoping we would see much more of Jimmy McGill's youth. There's the legacy of the 60s and 70s to deal with. The, um, the album cover for the Who's Tommy resembles a glass block window but a photo negative of one where the grid glows but the windows are clear. Um, um, Tommy's about transcendence, Jimmy is not. Jimmy is the anti-Tommy. Vince Gilligan may intend a comprehensive critique of the century of progress. Catholic thinkers have been uh, trying to reconcile progress with original sin for more than a century. Uh, the, the most uh, optimistic Catholic philosopher in this regard was Pierre Teilhard de Chardin who believed that humanity was evolving towards a final unity he called the Omega Point. What does Vince Gilligan believe? To Vince the Omega Point is a spinning Cinnabon in Omaha and the Omega Man the last man on earth, Mel Rodriguez, is spinning cons in a Chicago bar. The um, inoperative switch at Davis and Maine may be a reference to the Omega-13 device in the 1999 Star Trek tribute movie Galaxy Quest. In that movie the Omega-13 is a device with an unknown function. Ship's crew are reluctant to turn it on. When they do so as a last resort it throws the ship back in time 13 seconds. In contrast, the switch at Davis and Maine is presented as an idle curiosity, not an, uh, a last resort. Uh, the sign warns not to turn off the switch. Presumably this switch operates in the opposite direction from the Omega-13 and when Jimmy turns it off it throws the law firm into the future by 18 seconds, the amount of time he has it off. But 18 seconds would have transpired anyway indicating that switch is useless, the omega point has no point, and progress itself is an illusion. We are approaching the end of Chicago's second century of progress. Glass block windows signify the tension between the promise of the century of progress and the past that Jimmy can't escape. No matter how much progress Jimmy makes in his life, he'll remain slipping Jimmy forever. Streamline modern implies travel, people in motion, Jimmy's in constant motion yet seems to be going in circles and as St. Augustine notes the wicked walk in a circle. In closing here's a picture of Shark Carr from the um, 2016 Burning Man celebration in northern Nevada. 
Uh, Shark Car is a perennial visitor at Burning Man. It returns every year with a different finish. In 2016, it returned with a, an Airstream finish. And I thought to myself, this is Saul Goodman's ride. And that's my presentation. Thank you very much for your time and attention.